Good day, everyone. In this uh, last lecture part of amino acid biosynthesis, we will be dealing about how the essential amino acids are being synthesized and how the two non-essential amino acids, cysteine and tyrosine, is being formed from the essential amino acids, uh, methionine and phenylalanine. Essential amino acids, as we all know, are not synthesized by the human body, but they are very much needed for the metabolic processes to take place within the system, and hence we need to supply them through diet. These are formed either in bacteria or in plants, and mammals cannot form or synthesize the essential amino acids on their own. The Amino acids listed out here, these are the nine essential amino acids, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, trionine, tryptophan, and valine. Let's take a look at how these are being formed. Again, just to give you a recap of what we discussed last uh, video, we were discussing about how the non-essential amino acids are being formed from the various intermediates of the metabolic pathways like glycolysis, citric acid cycle, and the pentose phosphate pathway. In fact, the essential amino acids also are being formed from many of the intermediates uh, which occur in these uh, pathways like uh, glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the pentose phosphate pathway. So the ribose 5-phosphate forms the precursor molecule for the formation of histidine, pyruvate results in the formation of valine, leucine, and isoleucine, while phosphenol pyruvate can form tryptophan and phenylalanine. Methionine, threonine, and lysine are formed from the intermediary oxaloacetate of the citric acid pathway from which aspartate is formed, and this aspartate in turn results in the formation of methionine, threonine, and lysine. Let's take a deeper look into this. Let's first see how methionine is being formed and uh, the reaction that I'm going to describe here is how the bacterial cells produce methionine. Methionine is being produced from serine. Serine is a non-essential amino acid and uh, serine is getting converted to cysteine via an intermediary known as autoacetyl serine. And uh, the sulfur is being added to serine, uh, cysteine is having a sulfur uh, containing amino acid it is. And from cysteine, this cysteine then gets converted to homocysteine. And this homocysteine in presence of methyl tetrahydrofluorate folate gets converted to methionine and results in the formation of DHF, regeneration of DHF. So serine forms acetylserine and acetylserine with addition of sulfur gets converted to cysteine. This cysteine gets converted to homocysteine which in presence of methyl tetrahydrofolate get converted to methionine after getting methylated. In human beings, there is a slight change in the mode of uh, how cysteine is being formed. Uh, it's kind of a reverse reaction that is happening over here. While uh, from methionine, first homocysteine is being formed. And this homocysteine, which is formed from the methionine in presence of serine, get converted to cysteine here. So this is how the cysteine is being formed in human beings. It is kind of a reverse reaction, wherein first homocysteine is being formed from methionine, and this homocysteine reacts with serine in the formation of cysteine in human beings. For the formation of aromatic amino acids like phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, 
both in plants as well as in the microbes bacteria. This happens via an intermediary precursor, which is known as chorismate. So uh, chorismate is being formed from phosphenol pyruvate and erythrose 4 phosphate. And these two gets converted to chorismate, which is an intermediary. And from chorismate, via a series of reactions, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan are being formed. All these are many step reactions and uh, uh, the complexity keeps on increasing uh, with the complexity of the structure of the aromatic amino acids. So in the formation of the aromatic amino acids from phosphenol pyruvate and erythrose 4 phosphate, there is an intermediary molecule which is known as chorismate. And from this chorismate, through a series of steps, phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan are being synthesized. Chorismate is formed only in plants and bacteria, and they are not seen in mammals. In human beings, phenylalanine and tryptophan is not synthesized in the body and it needs to be supplied through diet. So tryptophan and phenylalanine are essential amino acids which cannot be synthesized in the human body because it cannot form chorismate, which is an intermediary molecule or the precursor molecule which results in the formation of phenylalanine and tryptophan. So while bacteria and plants can synthesize phenylalanine and tryptophan through the chorismate intermediary, uh, human beings cannot synthesize them, so it has to be supplied through the diet. Tyrosine is synthesized in humans uh, depending on the availability of Phenyl alanine. So we discussed that uh, the non-essential amino acid tyrosine uh, is formed in the body if there is presence of phenyl alanine. So the depending on the availability of phenyl alanine uh, and phenyl alanine hydroxylase enzyme, tyrosine is being formed in human beings. Synthesis of histidine is a kind of a complex process wherein uh, many number of molecules are like joining together to form this molecule of histidine. So all the other uh, 19 amino acids are synthesized by pathways of carbohydrate metabolism, but histidine is synthesized uh, from joining of many different molecules and is catalyzed by ribose phosphate pyrophosphokinase enzyme. So here ribose phosphate, ATP is needed, glutamine is needed, glutamine is needed and another molecule known as PRPP which is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. And this phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate is a turn formed from ribose 5-phosphate in presence of ATP molecule. So histidine is kind of a complex amino acid joined together by many different subunit uh, molecules like PRPP, glutamine, glutamate, and ATP molecule. And this PRPP in turn is generated from ribose 5-phosphate of the pentose 5-phosphate pathway. So to summarize or uh, to get an overview of all how all these different amino acids are being formed, we have seen that the biosynthetic pathways of amino acids could be grouped into various uh, groups based on the precursor molecules from which they are being derived. And all those here, which is uh, marked as LO, are precursor molecules coming from the pentose phosphate pathway. And those in cyan are like 
uh, from the glycolysis pathway and in green are those from the citric acid cycle. So alpha ketoglutarate forms uh, the precursor molecule for glutamate, which in turn produces glutamine, proline, and arginine. And uh, three phosphoglycerate produces serine, glycine, and cysteine. And the three non-essential and six essential amino acids are synthesized from oxaloacetate and pyruvate. From oxaloacetate, aspartate is formed. And from aspartate, asparagin, methionine, threonine, and lysine are formed. And from threonine, isoleucine is formed. So likewise, pyruvate uh, takes part in the formation of alanine, valine, leucine, and isoleucine. So amino acid synthesis, as we have seen, can occur in a variety of ways and they can be synthesized from precursor molecules by simple steps as in the case of non-essential amino acids. And these are synthesized from intermediary molecules which are formed from glycolytic or Krebs cycle intermediates. Then alanine, aspartate, glutamate are synthesized from keto acids like pyruvate, oxaloacetate, and alpha-ketoglutarate through a process of transamination, which are being catalyzed by transaminase enzymes. Aspirogen and glutamine are synthesized from aspartate and glutamate by a process of amidation, wherein amide groups are being added to the structure of these amino acids. And as I said, essential amino acids that are needed in the diet are being formed by through complex pathways which require more number of steps. And uh, such amino acids are being formed uh, through pathways which consist of around uh, 1 to 13 biochemical reactions uh, from their precursor molecules. And finally, these uh, essential amino acids are formed. The relative uses of amino acid biosynthetic pathways also varies among the species because every different species of organism has got their own need, unique metabolic needs. And based on these unique metabolic needs, the different synthetic pathways have evolved. So although some pathways are present in certain organisms, they are absent in others. Why? Because the unique metabolic needs of different organisms are different. So to uh, end up with, we have seen that amino acids are being synthesized from intermediary molecules of various metabolic pathways, which provides the carbon backbone to the amino acids, while the nitrogen in the amino acid is being assimilated from the atmospheric nitrogen through glutamate and glutamine. So thank you for listening.